Let me introduce you to the most cursed man alive, Jilp Vondel. And let me also introduce you to the hardest reward mod pack I've built to date. This series is going to be a radical departure from all of the previous reward series we've done on the channel, and there are only two goals this time around, survive and escape. I'm fully expecting to die, a lot, and to get the game over screen, a lot. But when that happens, we're going to take what we've learned and go right back into things with a fresh copy of Jilp Vondel. Think of it as sort of a RimWorld roguelike experience. It's going to be a high-tension series, so this time around we're going to have no previews in the thumbnails, nor spoilers about the episode in the video title. This mod pack features stronger enemies, harder game mechanics, additional needs, and fully revamped core mechanics, coupled with the hardest base game scenario going, Naked Brutality. The real question is, how many Jilt Vondals does it take to get into space? So let's get right into it, shall we? I'm a, I'm a little bit apprehensive about this one, I'm going to be honest, because I haven't played RimWorld sort of this close to vanilla, but also this difficult in a very long time. I mean, you've seen the last few series that we've played, and those have been very sort of um, autopilot to some extent. Obviously, there's been some difficulties here and there, but it's been very easy. This, however, is going to be uh, it's going to be something very new for me. So we are going to play Cassandra Rough to start off with. I think Savage... With all of these mods, learning how to use the mods and also playing along Savage difficulty at the same time might be a little bit too much, might be a little overwhelming. But again, I'm happy to start again as many times as we need to until we get off this goddamn planet with, with our boy, whose name I've definitely not forgotten. <laughs> Let's go commitment mode, just to really hammer the point home that we are we are committed to this playthrough, that when he's dead, he is dead, and then we'll come back fresh as a daisy. Speaking of which, let's give ourselves a seed. Let's go for... Um, well, let's go for Daisy for this one then in that case. And I'm going to put globe coverage down to 20%, not because it makes it any easier or any harder, but actually because it just means that we'll um, more easily be able to get in touch with the tribes. And I feel like it makes the world feel a lot smaller and actually gives you reason to interact with all these other factions that you're a lot more intimate with rather than being spread across the entire planet because you're never going to visit a whole room or planet. Even 20% is kind of a bit large. What about 15 Okay, we'll go for 15 then. World type, we are going to go for a RimWorld default. I'm not going to go with any of these because they may affect the difficulty. Obviously, all these mods are balanced for default RimWorld. That's what we're going to go with. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. We've got uh, some fairly interesting factions. We've got ourselves uh, the North Orber Compact, who immediately don't like us. We've got the Grey Gago. We've got the Grey Thicket. And, of course, we've got uh, Misery's Mountain up there, the Revolvers. So, in fact, the only people that like us... Oh, in fact, none of them like us, do they? Minus 20. So, we've got a couple that are neutral to us. Where do we want to start, then? Now, I'm thinking immediately, because we've got the Hygiene mod, any river is going to be paramount, to be honest with you. Rivers are very, very powerful. Now, what I'm personally looking for is river plus mountain close to a road. I think that would be the ultimate sort of strategy here. Um... So I'm sort of going along the coast, just sort of seeing what we can spot here. Looking at sort of major rivers, anything that fits that bill. Well, we've got in to start off with small hills. Yeah, no, I do want to go for mountains, primarily because the defense from the mountains is going to be paramount when you see some of these other mods that we've got going on right now, especially the realistic of uh, fog, the, the fog of war. That's going to be crippling with a big old open plains map. I think that would just get us killed very, very quickly. Um, I'm not seeing much, especially not by a road with mountains as well. It might be too much of a difficult ask. We could go by a sea tile, which would also be fairly interesting. Um, if we've got even, even like a large hills river, I'd, I'd basically take small hills, large river. Mm, not ideal. I do want to be close to a faction so that we can get some faction interaction going on there as well. Um, we could go somewhere like here. Uh, fortunately, no, we need the river. I was going to say, we're not near a road, but we're actually not on the river either. What about someone like this? Now, it's not particularly close. And in fact, I think going that close will piss off these guys as well, won't it? Oh, they're not bothered. Okay, that's great then. Sure, we'll start there. I didn't check any of the stats, which is what I'm going to now in hindsight. Um, so what have we got? Mountainous river. Good. There are caves. Oh, that sucks. All right, what about this one? No caves on that one. 30 out of 60 days growing time. See, that's not ideal either, is it? What if we start somewhere a bit more further down coast? Um, saying that there's really nowhere with river and mountains, though. And I think the river-mountains combo is going to be the thing to keep us alive. I don't want caves. 30 out of 60 days is really not a big fan. But the average temperature seems pretty good on that one. Minus 6. It gets fairly cold, but actually fairly temperate the rest of the year. Now, the movement difficulty is quite high, but once we get past this other mountain range, it's almost free straight to this road there. It's, it's not fantastic, I will admit, but it is um, 
you know, again, in terms of defense, fairly high. And we're also not too far away from other settlements. So I'm kind of a big fan of this one. The other one I'm sort of considering is also this one. So small hills, large river. But we're going to go for this one. Uh, which one did I say? This one here. Yeah, I think that's a... That looks like quite nice to me. And it's been a long time since I played in mountain. Now, we're not going to make a mountain base. But we are, in fact, going to make... You know, we're just going to live around in the sort of mountainous regions. Use that defensively. Got the river as well, which we can build around. And that's sort of going to be the main crux of this... Uh, of the base. So what are we doing for this? Then? Well, obviously, we're going to load in uh, Jilp Vondel here. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the random button on this one. We're going to hit the random button on this one. And that is going to be our character. Very straightforward. Now, the interesting thing is Prepare Carefully got an update recently. And I'm only doing this so that we can have our, our Jilp Vondel here. And it's more or less uh, random there. Oh, he's horrible. He's absolutely horrible. But that's part of the difficulty. That's part and par parcel of this, uh, of this campaign that I'm trying to do here is the added difficulty of the character start as well. He's fucking terrible. Um, we're probably going to die very quickly just because he is that bad, but there we go. Top dog, that's almost top dog, and I'll accept that. Now, again, because of Prepare Carefully and Facial Features not having an update, every single time he's going to have a different beard, which I think is fairly interesting. So we could keep... Oh, I didn't realize it would replace that. But uh, just as an example here, we can reload and get a different beard, but apparently it gives us different traits. So I will reset again. That looks a little better. You know what? I'll take that. Again, we're not going to mess around with that too much because I think this is fairly fun. Oh, got incapable of social... That's going to be difficult then, huh? That's going to be so difficult. Incapable of wardening. So how the hell are we supposed to get recruits? And again, this is part of the difficulty. This is something I've, I intended to have as part of the mod pack. So how are we going to get recruits? Well, we're going to have wanderers join. And then when we have wanderers join, they can hopefully be the warden of the colony instead. This is looking very mountain dense. Now we have realistic fog. So for those of you who haven't seen realistic fog before... The point of this mod pack is that fog is revealed. You have to go and reveal parts of the map so that the early game is difficult in the sense that you have to go and scout places out and try and find the best spot for your base. But secondarily, we've also got this consistent fog of war as well, the shroud. So we cannot see things when they go into the shroud. So as you just saw that deer disappear, but we've still got vision of the map. So we know what the map is shaped like, but we actually can't tell much beyond that. Look at him struggling to get across the river. Run, Jilp Vondel, run. I believe in you. This is difficult. And now I'm originally kind of drawn to this area here, even though we can't see much. I think this one might be a good plan just because it's that well defended. We've got the river defending us as well. Looks like it might be quite dense mountains, but I'm going to send him just around to this area first. Oh, God, speed up the time. Need to immediately get on food, don't we? And I've not played Remord like this in a very long time. So, oh, you know what? That's not so defensible after all, is it? Right, let's quickly scope things out as fast as possible so we can get onto the actual... What is this? Oh, okay. Interesting. New little area here. All right, and we want to get like a good, like I said, scope out on the map in this very early game, just so we can get an idea of the most defensible areas. This is a nice choke point. Depending on what's on this side of the river, this could be a very nice, oh, is this just solid mountains? It's not at all. Or is this a pocket? Okay, this is nice. I'm liking the look of this already. Let's move up north and just quickly get all of this scoped out as well. Okay, we've got a little bit of a sort of cave system. Is this another pocket here as well? Okay, this could also be very nice. Yeah, this is fairly fairly well defended, I'd say. And we want to be near the river too, so I'm sort of thinking we go around this area and just block up these walls. I think this area here with the river down the middle, yeah, this could be good. Now, what else have we got? Just some more. I'm not too concerned about quickly making sure all this is mapping out. But, uh, oh God, hang on. He's washing his face. Sorry, hang on. He's, he's drafted for way too long there. Look, this is fairly important, my guy. Okay. Okay, we've got a good feel for the map. I'm not going to bother with everything else right now. I'd rather get food and things set up first. And we're also playing on quite a fast speed. Yeah, so this is all very, very open. Let's go for this area. I think this little alcove is fairly nice. Um, just generally this whole area. We'll build a little block across there. Now, this is where some raids might be able to catch us out. Because that's going to give them very, uh, very good... It's going to give them very little distance before they can drop on us. Let's put it that way. This area, quickly block it off with a few different blocks. And again, the river is going to act as a natural defense as well. Oh, this might be difficult. This might be a difficult area, but let's uh, let's give it a go. Right, so let's stop rambling. Let's start building. Now, I'm not really sure too much about how the hygiene mod works, I will admit. I've used it a little bit in the past, but not recently. So it's going to take me a while to get back onto things here. Now, I do know the river gives us an advantage in the sense that you have to be careful with... Your water and making sure it's not contaminated. So the water that you drink from has to be separate from the water that your toilets and sewage flows into. 
So, with a river, what we can do is we can put the sewage right at the bottom, so right downstream, and then drink from upstream, and that way we're never going to get contaminated. So, our actual drinking water is going to come from up here, or closer to this area as well. Was that gold? Oh, that's very nice for, you know, multi-analyzers, assuming we ever get to that bit with this very, very useless character. He's got 10 melee, though, so I'm, I'm kind of um, underestimating him a little bit. He's got good mining, bad plants... But he does have a passion for it. And he's got good medical, which is very, very important for this early game when there's only one guy kicking around. We've also got a little bit of heal root. We've got a little bit of berry. I think we might have to go for berries during the early game. I don't know how else we're really going to get food here. Now, let's check the research and see what we start with. Um, passive coolers, sure. Complex furniture. So, Pemmican might be a really, really good start. So we've also got water filtration. That sounds like we should also go for that very quickly. Washing machine. So although this mod is massively inconvenient, you know, adds a lot of extra difficulty to things, the washing machines allow you to wash clothes that were that were tainted and allows them you to turn them into uh, non-tainted clothing. So, you know, for selling purposes, for even just wearing yourselves, very, very useful. How do I get food in the early game of RimWorld? I'm, I've honestly no idea. How do I get food when I haven't got weapons? And haven't got fishing. We've got no mods like that because I think they're just a little bit too overpowered. Let's start with a small patch of rice then, I guess. We'll just immediately start work on that. And then uh, when that's done and when we're all set up and have a little bit of food, we'll move on to something a bit more long-lasting, a bit more nutritious like corn. Man, this is... Uh, feel free to give me hints, for the love of God, because this is... Um, it's going to be tricky. I think it's going to be very, very tricky. And I expect to lose our first few characters and I expect a few game over streams while we just get to grips with all the mods, if nothing else. But, again, it's all about the learning process. So, as for a house, I think we'll very just quickly put down, what do you think, like a crappy little wooden house here. Um, we'll sort of build it close to this mountain as well, but also fairly close to the water. This is just a little more defensible going this close. Is that more gold? What is that? Oh, silver. Right, fair enough. Okay. Um, now, I've got to be very careful. One of the things I personally fall into with, with RimWorld is cutting down way more trees we need, or, or setting so many things to mine that we really don't need. So I think I need to be very, very careful with that. Oh man, we actually do need to cut some wood before I can even start uh, start building things, huh? Right, there we go. He's, oh god, he's harvesting berry bush. Is this not a bit risky? Because berries can give you food poison. If he gets food poisoning immediately, he's going to drop down, and that's going to be it, you know? That's going to be everything. Oh, we've got ambrosia. Well, that's nice to know. <laughs> Thank god. That's the one thing we really, really need right now. We haven't got fresh food or fresh water, but we've got some ambrosia, so we can be high as balls as he starves to death. All right, let's go for some very, very quick structures here. Um, we don't really even need to be that big, do we? Let's just do something like that. Oh, you know what? We don't need this back wall at all. Get rid of that. Nonsense. All right, there we go. Okay, Jilp, let's get to building, my friend. So we are going to go manual priorities and just very quickly sort this out. Hall, basic rearm refuel is fine. Um, no handling, no training. Butcher cooking should be quite high as well. High sh uh, hunting should be highest priority. Now, I also have another mod that means that we have to... Again, f mod list, uh, full mod pack is available in the description from the Steam Workshop. It will take you to a collection that I've got over there. We do have another mod, which means machines need constant repair. So unlike base game room where your batteries might have a very small percent chance of breaking, then you just go and repair them with the component. In this, we need they need maintenance. They need constant maintenance, which I think makes the game a lot harder as well. Oh, God. I'm actually kind of dreading this. Why did I agree to do this series? All right, let's quickly get rid of just about everything. Now, Combat Extended is another mod I have absolutely no experience with. Along with, you know, I don't have any experience with the current version of the Hygiene mod. So those are going to be the two biggest mods, I think, during this early game. Because that's, you know, essential survival. Hunting and water. So, God knows what I'm going to do with that. Honestly, I, I really don't even know where to start with Combat Extended. I don't know how effective weapons are. I don't know about positioning. I don't know about tactics or anything. So if you've got any pointers, I don't want you guys to like backseat for me or, or give me hints. I'm not looking for you guys to explain things to me. I want to learn. I want to fail and learn through failure. But, you know, if you've got any, you know, just sort of generic must-knows, that would be very, very good. I'm going to keep Jilt o awake much, much longer than you probably should for this first night. Just to quickly get this building done. Oh my god, my dude. I'm sorry to do this to you. This may be overworking to start off with, but I feel like it's fairly important when we haven't even got room to sleep in. Alright, let's quickly chop some more wood. And that, again, this is what I've got to be careful of. Chopping too many trees down, because that will screw us quite massively. Now let's also designate a roof area over this one, because that will have them automatically cut down the trees here. And that will give us a little bit more wood as well. Feel like I'm gonna regret this. I really do feel like I'm gonna regret this. At least we got ourselves a nice rat there, which we're gonna club to death very, very soon. You know, speaking of which, 
Let's equip wood and club this rat to death. I'm sure he's more than capable of it. He's got 10 melee, so in fact, maybe we should just manually hunt. And funnily enough, Combat Extended seems to almost have something... Oh, and also we've got this as well that shows what weapon he's got equipped. I feel like that wouldn't have happened in base game room mode. I feel like in base game room mode, you stand there clubbing this rat to death for what? Like, 5 to 10 minutes? <laughs> that seems like it's a lot more convenient anyway. Right, let's go back up to speed for it then. Quickly get this house built as soon as possible. Do we really want furniture? We're definitely not building a floor. I need to be very, very careful about what we build. I think a bed is very, very important. So we're going to go with a bed. Dresser for the comfort. I feel like it's just bigger things to craft right now. You know, we could do with actually a ranged weapon. That wouldn't hurt. Let's go production. Butcher spot. Butchering here yields only 70% of the meat and leather. I mean, during this early game, that's essential though, isn't it? And then I think a fueled stove. No, no, no. Well, yeah, yeah. Fueled stove is the one I was talking about. So we do need some steel as well. Now, do we have any steel convenient to us? Oh my god, it doesn't look like it at all. Oh, okay, so we've got some over the other side of the river. That's not convenient at all, but, you know, we've, that's just what we've got to expect at this stage of the game, unfortunately. What is he cutting down now? Cut an oak tree? I didn't tell you to cut down that tree. Why is he cutting that down? Oh, that's strange. I don't know why he did that. Oh, well, we'll, we'll keep a close eye on things. As long as he's building the base, I don't mind. That's absolutely fine by me. Now, how the hell do we get power in the early game? I guess the thing that we'd focus on is sustainable power when we've only got one Duke. We don't want him constantly going out getting fuel for generators. So I'm actually thinking maybe we just wait until we've got... Um, why don't we wait until we can get... I, I guess wind turbines are not a bad start. I don't want to do wood fire generators. There's only going to be one go for a while. So wind turbines are probably more than enough. Now what I'm thinking is we go for the water turbines or whatever the hell they're called. Water wheels. Because those are very, very good during this early game. And honestly, just with a river this sizable... I think they'll last us a very, very long time, even if we had a much, much bigger, more bustling colony with many more machines. Right, like, we can put the speed up a little bit, because I think we're in a good situation right now. He does have no food. I mean, that is also something I should probably consider. He's ravenously hungry. Butcher the rat? I mean, we could butcher the rat. Wait, okay, butcher creature. Do forever. Now, again, I have some convenience mods, and again, I think they're fairly balanced enough. I basically said to myself, anything we can do whilst pause shouldn't count towards the game being easier. So things like, while we're paused, you know, uh, these things. So, so mods that basically let us add different builds more conveniently. Things that like this, you know, that I don't think adds to the easiness or the difficulty of the game at all. I just think that's more convenient for us, the player. It's just a quality of life thing rather than a difficulty change there. Okay, he's going to eat raw rat meat. You know what? It's better than starving to death, so I'll take it. And he's probably not particularly happy about that either. But hey, eight raw food. Definitely better than being hungry, I'd say. We've almost got a house built here. We just need a little bit more wood. Maybe we should shrink the rice farm a little bit. That's a lot of rice for one dude. Oh, God. I didn't mean to shrink it down that way. Damn it, Rimworld. Right. We'll sort of shrink it down. I mean, I don't know. How much do we really need? I don't want to spend a lot of his time because rice is obviously a, a very quick to grow and quick to harvest crop. I don't want him constantly spending the majority of his very limited time and resources replanting lots of rice. Now, one thing you might know, I don't have to tilt to a mod. There is the ability to make sort of fertilizer from the sewage mod, or from the hygiene mod, out of sewage. Sleeping on the ground when he's got a bed. I mean, this is this is absolutely just Jilp Vondal things. Okay, uh, why would you do this? Go to bed? Oh, you know why? I bet he's passed out, because he's tired. So what we actually need to do then is, uh, maybe just say do anything between these hours. There you go. If you want to go to bed now, my dude, you're more than welcome to. Nice. This is not too bad. I think this is an okay start. I don't mind playing on the higher speeds when we've only got one dude. You know, when we're managing a whole colony, we might want to turn it down a little bit. But during this early game, it really is just waiting for him to, you know, chop down trees. We've got plants growing. We haven't got any food, which I'm kind of concerned about. I'm also a little apprehensive about going for berry bushes. Because when I've played uh, Naked Brutality in the past, getting berry bushes and then immediately being hit with food poisoning means your character goes down and then, you know, is, is dead. Because he'll starve to death because there's no one else that can really help him out there. Starvation, yeah, you don't say. Again, we've got no fishing mods, because I generally have found a lot of fishing mods to be very, very overpowered. Oh, God, I'm thinking, why can't we see these animals? But, of course, there's fog of war. Oh, man, I didn't even consider about how difficult that would make things. So we can't even see, really, what's around to hunt, either, because we're going to have to manually hunt. Firstly, we have no ranged weapon. I think we can craft a bow and some arrows, but he's very good at melee, so I think we probably want to just go behind him and club him with a piece of wood right now. Well, we've got some rice. Uh, now, I was recommended we use the seeds mod for extra difficulty, and I looked into that, and I thought... 
it's incredibly difficult. Because uh, I believe plants actually drop seeds and then you have to plant seeds. You can only plant, you know, the amount of plants you have the equivalent seeds for. You can't just plant an infinite amount of rice. I think that mod was... I, th I think that detracts away from the base game room mod experience. Like, room mod is balanced for the ability to plant a, a ridiculous amount of plants. And that's represented with the plant skill. I think having seeds on top of that, that's quite hefty. That's quite a big ask. So I'm not particularly doing it for this one. Maybe when we die as this character, which I think is going to happen. Uh, maybe then we might want to uh, install some extra difficulty mods like that. But I'd like to get comfortable with what we got first before we really ramp things up to that extent. All right, let's also go and club this rat. There we go. All right. Two critical hits there. Again, I think with his melee skill, this is the safest way to hunt rather than with a crappy bow and arrow that he's constantly going to mess with. Um, we have no stockpile zone. Really? Uh, do we really not? I think you're lying to me. Oh my god. Is he not allowed to haul? Ah, that will be more like it. Okay. Prioritize hauling rat and then we'll also prioritize hauling this squirrel as well. There we go. Jilp gets to eat tonight. Jilp Fondle. <laughs> I feel like this is one of like... Uh, you know, Krupp Vush's sick experiments, or one of Donitz's sick experiments is dropping this dude off on a, on a planet by himself with nothing to do. With, like, no, no equipment, extremely hardcore scenario. There we go. Group of travelers passing by. Um, I was going to say we'll club them and, and recruit them, but we can't because he's got no bloody social. There he is, in his little hut, eating a squirrel meat. This is incredible. This is exactly what I wanted out of a RimWorld experience. And of course, the goal, as I mentioned at the very, very start during the intro, is eventually just to build a ship and fly away. Because I think that should be the end game of Rimworld. That's difficult enough to do anyway. Rimworld is a difficult game, especially on the higher difficulties. With all this other stuff, that's going to be insanely hard, I think. I think it's going to be a very, very difficult end game task. Right, let's go ahead and quickly... I don't think we have a vein miner, do we? Oh, we do. Okay, that's fine. Right, so we quickly grab those. And again, anything we can do, Paul, so mark all these ores to be mined. Don't particularly want to... Uh, not install mods because that seems like cheating again. It's, it's really not if we're paused. Right, so let's have him go off and get any ores. Now, I've actually specifically cancelled a lot of ores there because that's what I was talking about earlier. I don't want to fall into this trap of getting more resources than we need and then neglecting the other important stuff. So speaking of which, I think what we do need very, very urgently is fresh water. We've got food growing. That's going to take a while. So he's going to be eating raw food for a while. So how do we even start with the water stuff? So... I guess we could build a well? Oh, look, it shows the direction the water moves. That's very cool. Um, should we just build a well? But, I mean, it doesn't seem... There's got to be a better way of collecting river water, right? Should we put, like, a water tower? Um, how do we get the water from the river into the tower, though? Because a water tower is just for storing water, isn't it? So we put that probably, like, next to his house. We're going to forbid that because that also uses steel, and I want to use steel on the fuel stove first. Um, honestly, don't know. Wind? Oh, so we actually maybe just use legitimately a water pump. Yeah, pumping capacity is that many liters per day. Um, from wells to water towers. Oh, so it actually is from the well. But I imagine, you know, you get more upgraded wells in the future. It seems like, you know, connecting a, a wind-powered pump up to a primitive well doesn't seem entirely right. But I guess we could just put one here for now. There's actually a lot of underground fresh water as well. So put one there, fairly close to the river. I assume the river might be able to be picked up by that well as well. Or the river might feed the water under that well. I've really no idea. I am just speculating at this point. He's having a fun time there. Staring at his wall. This is the creepiest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. This is this is premium rim world right here. My god, that's horrible. Okay, fair enough. Right. Now, can we make any foods at all? I, I don't know whether or not we can craft... Uh, let's put down a crafting spot very quickly while he's asleep and just sort of see what we can make. We make shields. That's added by the Combat Extended Shields mod. What is this one? Uh, made of animal fur is useful for storing items when traveling. I don't know what that does. Oh, bolt capacity plus 15. Okay, that makes sense. So again, we can make arrows and we can make a bow. Make stick bombs. What are those? Primitive fusel explosive. A favorite of tribals who use these to fight technologically advanced enemies with armor. I see. So it's probably got some, uh, bonus damages against, you know, armored characters there. So, um... What would that be, like, blunt damage? I've no idea. I'm assuming it's shrapnel-based, anyway. Um, obviously, we've got some other shields, and then we could also just make him a club. That's probably not a bad idea as well. All right, let's get this well dug. I think the well should probably come before this deal, so I'm kind of happy to just leave him what he's doing here. Or he could botch it. That's good, too. 4.21 construction. I actually wouldn't expect too many successes in that case. We'll put the speed up very, very fast. Now, another mod that you've just noticed there that I have installed is the, uh, is the map render mod. So, if this guy dies, we'll sort of come up with, uh, we'll sort of show the overall progress of the map. 
do a little bit of a summary, move on to the next uh, Jilp Vondel version 2.0, the next clone of Jilp that we're putting through the many trials. <laughs> I really like this. I think, it's, I think it's a little bit fucked up, and I like the idea of it, you know, being the experiment of, say, Donitz Banger or something from one of our previous series. Right. Okay, so how much steel do we actually need for this? 71 out of 80. So I'm actually going to go ahead and cancel the other designations when he finishes this so that we can focus on cooking some actual meals. Oh, God, Mad Raccoon. Is this where the series ends? That would be incredible if... Why not haul uh, all of it? Why not haul everything? I've got the common sense mod installed, but clearly not. I'm just going to carry exactly what I need, no more, no less. It's very ascetic, man. So he's got chemical fascination, kind and cowardly. Ugh. So Jilp always shies away from danger. He is usually the first to flee from battle suppressibility plus 25%. I assume that's added by the combat extending mod. So it means that if the battles are getting a bit hectic, he may, I don't know, run away, have a mental breakdown. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but it sounds very fun. If they've added morale as a system to battles, that sounds like it could really give some dynamics to it. Right, there we go. Awesome. So, now we've actually got to go and get some stuff. I, I think it's time for a nice raccoon meal. Um, so, we could do expert colonist. I think we want to have... I mean, how many days of food do we want to eat? It's three meals per day. I mean, I'd rather get, like, five meals worth of food. So we'll do expert colonists. That way, if anybody joins, this should automatically adjust. We'll do that for now. Now, we could also build, like, a little passive cooler room as well. Um, let's go club that turtle. I was going to get the rest of the steel. You know what? I'll let him haul that for now because we will need steel for, you know, the tower eventually. Oh, 25. And he's bringing back what? Oh, how much did he bring home? Um, it's 27. Oh, nice. We can actually build the water tower as well. That worked out perfectly well, huh? That's very, very good. We need a little more wood. I think getting food before anything else is very, very good. Now, what is his mental break risk looking like? I'm going to assume it's tired, ravenously hungry, ate raw food. Okay, let's go club that turtle. Where did we see that turtle? We're going to have to go and hunt it down again. We've lost vision. There it is. What happened to that mad raccoon as well? I guess it's nighttime. Right, club the turtle. Come on. Stunned it. Oh, man. Good dodge. Oh, the turtle got a bite in, though. If he dies to a turtle, I would be very, very annoyed. Right, let's get that finished off and let's go home and cook us some turtle. I don't know if this will be enough for one meal, but fingers crossed. It'd be nice for him to have an actual meal. His first meal on the planet. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> Mike, this is exactly what I had in mind. No immediate danger. So he could just patch himself up. Oh, you're not know this heal route there. I don't want to waste that. This is the sort of extent this series has got to. I don't want to waste this heal route. Or something like that. I think we'll just go with a regular old heal. Because his medical is actually fairly okay. He'll wash himself off. And then let's prioritize tending to that afterwards. There we go. Wash his wounds. Get himself patched up. Quality 20%. You know what? He it wasn't in any danger anyway. So I think we're fine with that. Let's prioritize butchering. He'll do a bit of cleaning first of his dirty floor. There we go. And can we... Okay, when he puts that down... No, 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 no. Put it down. Have we got... Oh, we can. We can cook a meal. Oh my god. There we go. The first meal. Ambrosia Bringe, uh, you know what, I'll, I think I'll allow that. And Amb Ambrosia Binge isn't too bad. I think that's okay. Just let him have a little little bit of uh, a little bit of mood gain. Because, you know, it's, it's a long time before we're going to really face any raids or any threat or anything. So I think, you know, let him, be, let him get that Ambrosia warmth and, and chill out a little bit. And now he's got some meals too. So I think this is quite nice. Drowsy, darkness, I mean, it is night time. You could just go to bed. You know, he's just going to tweak out for a few hours now. That's an incredible first few days, I think, for Jilp. Now, not every episode is going to be me just doing it one big take, but, you know, with a series like this, it's probably going to be a lot less editing as well. Um, mainly because, you know, what am I going to edit out here? I feel like everything that we've seen is, has been quite valuable. Maybe when he's just sitting around doing research, I might edit that out, because that won't be uh, particularly good when the farm's upon his feet and he's got meals pre-made and, again, he's just sitting around building things or doing research or mining or whatever. I'll cut that out. But for this, I feel like this has all been fairly essential character development. Do you want to not do this anymore? Oh my god, please don't collapse due to extreme exhaustion. It, it, watch, he'll collapse now, and then that mega sloth will come over and eat him whole. Do you want to just stop? Oh, please, how long does this last? Come on. Jilp. Jilp, we can't end the first episode with you wandering around like a madman until you pass out. Okay, let's put the speed up then. Let's just, fingers crossed with this one. We need this water tower. This is time that's just being wasted. You could be out hunting, you could be out cooking meals. Okay, he's good. Oh, he's back. Okay, he's going for a wash immediately. What's his mood like now? With catharsis as well as the ambrosia warmth, he should be very, very happy, right? Okay, we're good for a couple of days. This is a great place to leave it. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys like this idea. And I hope you guys like the sort of different style of playthrough where if, if we die, we'll start again with a new guy. Just keep trying. It's going to be a hardcore series where we just keep, keep trying. And I think, you know, 
Maybe one day when we get very, very close to the end and then we have it all taken away. That's when I'll call it there. Um, but, you know, this is going to be fun. And the series will last as long as it lasts. And when we're bored of it, we can just move on without really uh, losing much, I would say. So it, hopefully it's going to be quite dynamic and flexible. Let me know what you think. And in the meantime, let's give a shout out to all of the patrons for making the series possible in the first place. Thank you for keeping this channel monetized on YouTube in 2019, which is quite a difficult task. A big thank you to Lucas Holting, Sean Thornton, Haydog, Atmosis, can't speak today apparently, Sidini, Alpha Scuff, Tim Bragg, Gray, Loris, Croesus, Vacuous Bacchus, Josh Lindeen Tesla, Michael Mullen, Mora, Jacob Alexander Fenton, Powers Presley, Asuna Kirito, Wolf Scent. I've lost my list. Where is it? Conspired T, Jimbo, Orcs Wolf, Facunda Vasquez, Tom Terror 18, Average Gamer 419, Escape, Tazzy 711, Daniel Faust, and Eric B. Thank you all for your support and the insane loves on Patreon. You are incredibly generous. Thank you for keeping the channel going. New Patreon list should be available, hopefully today. I know I've been saying that the past few days, but they're taking absolutely ages with it again. And of course, a big thank you as well to Shari, Sidini, Andrew Wilson, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Euphrates, I See the Great, Jack Allen, Wolfie, James Barnes, Betamus Max, Panther Pearl, Gabriel Van Ders, Law Allen Thomas, Nathan Flores, The Sage, Yoran DeVries, Haji Dumar, Arakira, Don, Crazy Pat, Don Connie 2 and 7, Seth McDougall, Joseph Beard, Jordan Campbell, Harry McGowan, Chris, Surfall the Sweet, Sadeth, Asaro, Nick, Will Wade, Hancock, Noah Gallimore, Fraser Brennan, The Insane Pickle, Adam Person, John Holiday, Zico, Jay Lara, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, and Justin Plock.